Sean Hook's Newsmaker Saturday starts now. Thanks for joining us on Newsmaker Saturday. We're going to talk to sports director Richard Sines in the later part of the program about the Cardinals this year. Obviously, they open up tomorrow here at home. So we'll break that down. But first, we're going to begin with a new set of polls that came out this week. This is from Insider Advantage. This is a Fox 10 survey of Arizona. And we wanted to show you what our results showed. And we're going to speak to Matt Towery in a moment, who's with Insider Advantage that conducted this poll. It's got Katie Hobbs at 44%, Kerry Lake at 43%, no opinion, 10%. So this is well within the margin of error, which is a little over 4%, 4.2%. Let's talk to the guy who did the poll, at least his group did, Matt Towery, the head of Insider Advantage. Matt, we appreciate the relationship, and thank you for being with us. Thank you, John. What stood out about this particular poll on the governor's race? The number one thing that stood out to me is the uh, percent of undecided. We're seeing undecided in a lot of races that I poll around the country where the undecided is really at 7 5 6%, even lower in these races, both the U.S. Senate and the gubernatorial race in Arizona, we're looking at about 10 percent undecided. And of that number, uh, the largest percent of undecided voters are independent voters or who say they're independent. So that stu stood out to me because it tells me there's a lot more room for this race to go one way or another in the next uh, 50 plus days. Matt, is there any way to drill down and know how much abortion is shaping this race now? It, it that issue seems to be really animating Democrats right now. Right. I, there's not a way because we didn't go into issues in this particular poll. But one thing I did note, John, is that, and this is true in many of these battleground states, that the Democratic candidate is in most instances doing substantially better with women than the Republican candidate. On the other side, flip side, the Republican candidate, generally speaking, the nominees generally are doing much better with males than um, the Democrats. So they almost end up washing each other out. Uh, now, the question is, will this be a, an issue that will drive more women to the polls than men, for example, that women generally vote more than men anyway? That we don't know yet. Some of the national polling I've done shows that while we talk about abortion, a lot of commercials about abortion, it's not rated as one of the top five issues among voters this year. There are other, I mean, obviously you have inflation, the economy, other issues that seem to be more front and center. But that doesn't mean it can't be a driving force for a segment that could make or break the election. We'll get to the U.S. Senate race in Arizona, which you also polled for us. But I wanted to drill down a little bit on who you who, who kind of who responded and, and exactly what you said. Um, among men, Kerry Lakes at 50 percent, Katie Hobbs at 35 percent. But among women, Katie Hobbs at 53 percent, Kerry Lake at 35, almost 36 percent. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the thing that I'm seeing, not only in Arizona, but in Georgia, Florida, Pennsylvania, almost all these close races around the country, or at least areas that are considered battleground. You're seeing, we're seeing these similar type numbers, which goes to your very question you asked earlier. Let's look at U.S. Senate. This is, um, shows Mark Kelly with a pretty good edge over Blake Masters, the challenger. Kelly is the incumbent, even though he hasn't been in there that long. He's holding the seat. Uh, you've got Kelly of 45, Masters of 39. And again, you've got a pretty big, no opinion, undecided number. Yeah, that's, that was really what stood out in the two Arizona polls. And now, let me just say that in my experience, sometimes when I see the no opinion high, that may be there's a shift going on in allegiances as to how people are going to vote. I don't know that because this is our first benchmark poll. We'll have to take more polls in Arizona. If I see that number go up in, let's say, two or three or four weeks, I'll know that there's a shift going on in, in allegiances and how people think they're going to vote. But right now, I just think it's a little high, the, the no opinion versus the other battleground states. I will say that clearly Kelly is in a stronger position uh, in the sense that he he has a comfortable lead. There are other polls, by the way, who came out at the same time, res polls I respect, that have this as a very tight race. But um, in my view, it's it could tighten, but I wouldn't call it a very tight race right now. Right now, so Kelly's got a comfortable, you would say, lead? Yeah, I think so. I, I th the, the one thing that uh, we have to watch 
is that all of these races, if they get enough money, both sides, and I don't know what the status is with Blake Masters. My understanding is that he's sort of been lagging a little bit in terms of being able to raise funds and get funds. Um, it, it, they will compress, and and that undecided will start to either fall along the proportionate uh, level that they have in this poll right now, or if there's a shift to undecided, they may shift over, and you may see Masters move up, and, and this become a more competitive race. I would say it's on the edge of being competitive right now, but I would not say that it's a super competitive race at this moment. When people are undecided, does that indicate that they are not satisfied with either choice? I don't think anybody's satisfied with any choice in politics anymore, period, to be honest <laughs> with you. Put a little humor in this. But no, I think you're right. But they end up voting one way or another if they're likely voters. They choose they choose their poison, as we used to say. And do they usually and fall to their party? They often fall to their party unless there's an overriding issue. You mentioned abortion earlier. I mean, there could be the issue of immigration, could be the issue of any number of issues that matter uh, gun control uh, or gun rights, however you want to describe it, that may drive an individual voter. But but what I have found, John, over the years is that elections move on individual issues, but most of these races <clears throat> move partially on a wave. And I think we may have some sort of wave develop. It could be a wave that just blunts these Republicans who are moving up a little bit around the country or it may be a wave that recaptures the so-called Republican wave that basically a lot a lot of folks think has sort of dissipated a bit in the last two to three weeks. Let's uh, let's look at the Joe Biden numbers. This is really fascinating. Right now, um, he's at 56 percent disapproval in Arizona, 43 percent approve. But again, when you start to drill down on the numbers, the number who approve of Joe Biden or somewhat approve totals about Oh, 45, 44 percent. So you're, we're, we're almost at, at an even split again on this. It, it, I guess what I'm getting at, Matt, right. is I think as we get closer to the election, we're going to see that this is an electorate divided right down the middle again. Well, you're right. The, the one thing that stuck out to me, uh, I, I poll for Real Clear Politics, a national uh, poll each month, and um, you know, I, I had Biden down as much as 20 something points a few months ago, and, he, and he's come up significantly in my poll. He's come up in other polls. But you have to remember, when we poll nationally, we include areas such as California, New York, heavily Democrat and very large states. Yeah. When we get to these battleground states, what I'm finding is that Biden's disapproval is 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 substantially stronger in these battleground states like Arizona, Florida, Georgia, et cetera, than the national average. And so I, the question I had, which I can't quite figure out, is why in the world these candidates aren't simply saying, you know, if you're a Republican, uh, the other guy, it's him and Joe Biden. But oddly enough, in some states, such as in Florida, Charlie Crist, the former governor in Florida, is literally running on touting his relationship with Joe Biden and in fact said he doesn't want the vote of anyone who voted for Donald Trump. So there's some sort of interpretation going on from yeah. various campaigns that doesn't necessarily jibe with what I'm seeing on, on a battleground basis. We've got about a minute, Matt. Um, why are pollsters so confident in their work? They Most election polls report a 95 percent confidence rate, but when the outcomes land, it's about 60 percent accuracy. What's going on? <laughs> Well, because they're not realistic. Um, we can miss it at any time. I tell people, when you talk about polling, particularly as hard as it is to gather information now and get people to tell you the truth, going through text, emails, phone lines, which are dying, cell phones. If you were to stand at one end of a football field and throw a dart and try to hit a dartboard right in the bullseye, what are your chances? We're polling a giant football field and we're trying to get to that bullseye. So I think <laughs> if you get anywhere near 4.5 or 5%, yep. you haven't done too darn bad. Okay. I always say, take it as a momentum yep. uh, measure more than the ultimate outcome. Matt Towery, Insider Advantage. Matt, we look forward to the relationship throughout the campaign season. Great to see you. Thank Thanks you for John. your time. Appreciate it. Okay. Take care. You got it. Always appreciate your time watching Newsmaker Saturday. We really appreciate it. And... Um, you can always get shows on the web and past shows 
We will see you next week on Newsmaker Saturday.